Tall Tale TV. Of Monsters and Mushrooms by Leslie Heron. Chapter 26 Calibia. Two sets of onyx hands pried open the massive, armor plated jaws of a boar worm. One animated skeletal statue on each side of the monstrous mouth. The creature gave a high-pitched shriek of fury as it lashed its battered body against the decrepit structures behind it. Pavement shattered and buildings crumbled, while dozens of legs clattered uselessly in a vain struggle to free itself. But still, the statues held fast. Gliding toward the creature, a towering and rail-thin figure dressed in robes of a fine gossamer lifted a long, curved blade in the shape of a crescent moon. The steel tip sank upward through the worm's open maw and into its cranium. The thrashing ceased, and the hulking beast fell limp to the ground. A soldier ran down the street, stumbling over open fissures and exposed cables. He collapsed to one knee, keeping his eyes trained on the ground even as the two carved sentries moved to either side of the figure. Speak! The voice was dry, powerful, and not remotely human. Forgive this intrusion, madam, but there was an incident in Sector 8. Multiple squads have reported further subterranean movement in that district. The exact number is unknown. Communications with all troops have been lost. Madam Whisper examined the cleanliness of her blade before tossing a filth-stained rag to the ground. She looked down at the soldier, still kneeling before her. An incident. Why have the worms gathered so far from our troops? She lifted her ancient golden crown, readjusting it ever so slightly. We're not entirely sure, Madam. But the reports, before the comms were lost, said... The soldier swallowed hard as he stood. He took half a step back before continuing. That, well, that the Slayer of the Forty was spotted in the vicinity. The bones of her skeletal fingers cracked ominously as she clenched them around the handle of her blade. Her empty eye sockets glowed a hateful blue. A torrent of wind emanated from her body, whipping around her with the power of a microburst. It flipped long-forgotten cars, snapped light poles, and shattered what remained of the concrete beneath their feet. The soldier toppled end over end before landing in a bramble of dead vines and creeping mushroom moss. Madam Whisper turned to her onyx statues motioning them with a sweep of her hand in the direction of Sector 8. They sprinted from her side, unhindered by their own heavy forms. Rally the troops to deal with the worms, but the Slayer is mine. Madam Whisper pulled the harassed soldier from his tangle of thorns. She set him back on his feet with all too much vigor. If any harm befalls him before I get there, I will personally remove the spines of the perpetrators. The soldier gave a meek nod of understanding and scrambled away in a shaky retreat. Madam Whisper sheathed her curved blade and set off at a trot to find the man who had dared to betray her. She'd soon make him wish he had died in the jaws of a borer worm. Brig heaved a rusted motorcycle into the sling of the trebuchet as Attila shot another colorful insult at the hulking stone deity before using a small pocket torch to light the vehicle on fire. Your mother was a fish tank ornament, and your daddy smelled like limestone. Fish tank ornament? Brig grunted as he hauled back on the lever, sending the vehicle skywards and directly into Alpha's face. He gave Attila a patronizing grin. That one didn't even make sense. They don't have to make sense. They just have to distract him. Attila gave his eye patch a nervous scratch. Seems to be working, though. He's super pissed. 
Alpha continued to grow more and more unhinged. The creatures were relentless in their attacks, and the farther in he ventured, the more attention he drew to himself. He flailed his massive arms and legs, crushing worms with his body without regard to the damage he was causing himself. A flaming ball of metal and gears slammed into his head. He whipped around with an angry roar. Those two idiots manning the trebuchet were just making things worse. He kicked off the worm that had latched onto his foot and ignored the several others that burst from the ground as he waded through the throngs of debris and dead bodies. Brig wrenched a steel mailbox free from the sidewalk while Attila was cranking back on the winch of the catapult. Brig had just loaded the battered letterbox into the sling when he saw Evan running out of the battlefield, yelling and waving his tiny arms to get their attention. I said stop, you morons! Evan collapsed against the frame of the trebuchet, sucking in lungfuls of air despite the pang in his side. Eric and Val are still out there. Wait, Val's back? Brig abandoned the mailbox, moving to offer Evan a hand. Oh, great, Attila scoffed, depositing a bucket of shrapnel into the old post box. Now we know who opened the portal. He tossed in a couple cans of spray paint. The guy couldn't share the limelight just this once. He slammed the lid to the post box and pulled out his pocket torch. Evan watched Attila light a long, homemade fuse before he could find the words. Uh, actually, I got a pretty good look before Alpha tossed me. His mouth formed a line as he looked down at the ground. I, I think he might be dead. Attila rubbed the back of his neck sheepishly. Oh, well, in that case, what I meant to say is... He cranked back on the lever and watched the mailbox sail gloriously through the sky before slamming into Alpha's side. It exploded in a fireball of rusted metal and burning liquid. Knock it off! Briggs slapped him in the back of the head, knocking his hat off. He turned his attention back to Evan. You said Eric's in that mess, too? Attila picked up his hat with a nervous chuckle. Sorry. Yeah, last I saw, he was trying not to get trampled by the worms. We gotta get them out of there, guys. They don't stand a chance. Alpha just keeps stirring up more worms. How the hell are we gonna be able to find them in all of that? Brig asked, stroking his mustache in thought. Attila raised a hand. I have an idea. But, well, you might not like this plan. Evan shrugged. Whatever it takes, we gotta hurry. Alpha tore one of the skittering creatures from his chest, gripped it between both hands, and pulled. Its hard armor splintered, as though it were merely made of wood, spilling out its innards in a thick mucus of green ooze into a puddle beneath it. He tossed the dead worm to the ground and looked in the direction of the accursed catapult. Whatever it was they were loading into it, it was small. Ha! Run out of ammo, have you? I will gladly crush your bones to make more fodder. Alpha had barely lifted one of his massive stone arms when the something small zipped past his head. A tiny, high-pitched voice screaming as it flew by. Before he could investigate farther, there were several more worms struggling with one another for his attention. Evan was careening through the air towards the far side of the park, moving much faster than he had anticipated. When he had agreed to this asinine plan, if you want to call it that, he had assumed the others would be following him back into the destruction. In retrospect, it really shouldn't have come as a surprise when they forced him into the trebuchet with a makeshift parachute, alone. He yanked repeatedly at the frayed strand of twine, the one Attila had assured him would work. I hate this plan, 
Evan shot as he continued to tug at the string. Panic was overtaking him, and he struggled harder. Work, 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 damn it! He let out a shout of surprise when the strand finally pulled free. Evan felt a massive tug as two sets of bungee cords snapped tight. Holy crap! He looked up and saw a billowing cut of tattered fabric spread out above him. The faded words, Grand Opening, still clearly visible across it. I can't believe that worked! He turned his attention back to the crumbling cityscape, scanning the terrain for Eric, but was distracted by a small pop in the distance. Evan looked over his shoulder in time to see a smoke trail headed straight for him. Something whistled past him back in the direction he had come and slammed into the middle of Alpha's back. There was a sizable explosion on impact, showering the surrounding area with flaming bits of charred worm and molten stone. Evan looked up at the sound of whistling and flapping fabric. There was a flaming hole in his makeshift parachute, and it was quickly growing. I can't believe I thought that it'd work. What the hell was that? Attila lifted his eye patch, trying to get a better view of where the rocket had come from. Briggs shrugged. What was it me? It came from over there. Attila pointed across the battle-torn park. Troops were spilling out onto the city streets, filling in along the perimeter of the open area. They were organizing into separate groups, some firing round after round of suppressing fire in Alpha's direction. Another group was busy setting up tripod-mounted heavy machine guns, and the last group were reloading rocket launchers. Attila smiled as he looked back at his friend. Oh, hey! It's those soldier guys again! You mean the ones who want you dead? Attila gave a nervous chuckle, his smile sliding from his face. Yeah, those ones. Then it's... Probably not a good thing that I hear marching behind us, is it? Attila turned to see a group of heavily armored troops marching side by side, less than a minute out. How fast can you turn this trebuchet around? With his arms locked around his brother's chest, Eric tugged hard against Vel. But his body was comprised of so many cybernetics and metal plating that he weighed far more than Eric was able to carry. He slumped to the ground, hot tears leaving muddy streaks down his face as he leaned against the dead carcass of a borer worm. His entire life, Vel had been there to protect him when things were at their worst. He was there to save him when Eric got into trouble, or carry him when things got too hard. And now, Eric couldn't even return the favor. He couldn't even drag his brother's body out of harm's way. Explosions and gunfire filled the sky overhead, choking the air with ash and smokes as chunks of stone and exoskeleton rained down around him. Here he was, once again in the middle of a bloody war zone, surrounded by fire and destruction. But this time... His brother lay dead at his feet. He covered his face with his hands and sobbed like a broken child. Eric could hear the clatter of something scrambling over the dead worm he was resting against, but he didn't care. Let it take him, he thought. There you are! Evan slid down the side of the worm. Come on, we gotta get out of here. It's freaking crazy out there. Eric pulled his hands down and offered Evan a sad smile as he gestured to his brother. I was too late. You mean he's dead? Eric nodded. Evan knelt down in the rubble beside Vel. He took a long moment, as if composing himself, before he pulled the machete strapped to his back. He flipped it around and placed the handle into the cyborg's remaining hand closing the fingers around the hilt. Evan let out a heavy sigh as he rearranged Vel's arms across his chest. 
I never... I never really had any friends. But he was the closest thing to one I ever had. The ground shook as the battle continued to rage on around them. Eric looked down and forced a painful smile. You go. I'll stay here with him. Evan climbed to his feet and faced Eric, his eyes moist and his chin giving the slightest tremble. He would kick my ass if I let his brother die out here. So shut up and get up. Brig couldn't believe how he'd ended up in this predicament with his hands over his head. He was about to be arrested for something he wasn't even a part of. The marching troops had drawn closer, their weapons trained on Attila. One soldier had his rifle leveled on him, but like his compatriots, his focus was elsewhere. Attila was perched atop the trebuchet, using his pocket torch to hold off three men trying to scale the rickety structure. He let out a maniacal cackle as he singed their fingertips. <laughs> You'll never take me alive! The third soldier pushed past the others, his hand outstretched to grab the merc's skinny leg. Listen, dirtbag, you're outnumbered and outgunned. Surrender now, and we might just let you live. Attila chuckled, and then responded by lighting the man's underarmor on fire. This caused him to fall, screaming and flailing, into the other two soldiers, and they collapsed to the ground in a singed and smoking pile. Attila rose to his full height, throwing his poncho over his shoulder. The wind caught it just right, and it billowed out dramatically against the plumes of smoke and ash. Do you know who I am? I'll take you all on. I'm the Slayer of the Forty. I'm unstoppable. Whoa. The earth heaved as another well-aimed rocket sent Alpha collapsing into the ground. Attila lost his footing and tumbled down from his perch. A dozen armored hands latched on and hauled him upright. He snapped and spat at anything he could reach as they slammed him up against a wall, struggling to restrain him. It took the soldiers several more attempts and a couple dozen bitten digits to slide a pair of handcuffs around his scrawny wrists. Attila gnashed his teeth in anger, like a caged animal. Come over here and fight me like a man. I'll bite your legs off. Brig couldn't fight the grin pulling against his face. He loved watching Attila fight. It was like witnessing an angry pug try to take on a pack of German shepherds. You knew how it was going to end, but you couldn't help but smile. The sound of more marching soldiers filled the air, vibrating through the barren city and echoing off every broken building. They had surrounded Alpha, weapons poised to take down the withering monolith. The ground shook again, a rumbling that came from deep within the city's core. The swarm of worms that had wrapped themselves around the stone statue abruptly disengaged and fled into the ground in a spray of dirt and rock. Alpha let out a triumphant roar and turned his attention to the gathering troops. You tiny, pathetic toy soldiers. You aren't even worth my time. He lurched forward, dropping to one knee and slamming a broken fist into the ground. The shockwave that erupted sent the armored men flying back as if they were made of paper. For the first time, Brig could see the damage that Alpha's surrogate body had sustained. Large portions of the stone monolith's surface had been torn away, the inner workings laid bare. Glowing arcs of electricity danced up and down along a tangle of circuitry, gears, pistons, and cables. It was like looking at the exposed steel musculature of a being as infinitely complex as the human body itself. Briggs' hands slowly fell back to his sides as he watched the damage to the machine repair itself. Small articulated arms reattached severed connections, reconstructed lost components, 
and seal exposed areas in tightly coiled bands of metal to replace the once stone surface. It wasn't a speedy process, but it was fast enough to worry him. They would need to take Alpha down all at once. There was another shallow tremble, and the asphalt mere feet from Alpha began to splinter. Large chunks of concrete and gravel erupted into the air as something huge lunged from the earth. It resembled the borer worms, but it was roughly the width of a subway tunnel and twice as long. Its jet black armor was covered in jagged spines, and its open maw revealed six wicked mandibles instead of three. It sunk each one of them into Alpha's torso as it snaked out of the ground in a fluid attack. Amidst the creature's screams and the soldiers shouting over the sounds of battle, Brig could just make out one thing repeated over and over. It's the brood, mother! Eric scrambled through the gaps between the tangles of dead worms, following Evan as best he could. The teen was able to fit through areas in this labyrinth of death and nightmares where he could not, and more than once they'd had to double back and find a safer route. Their trek was made far more treacherous, with the landscape constantly shifting as Alpha battled with a boar worm that looked right out of a Norse myth. Evan reappeared to Eric's left, waving for him to follow. The tiny merc had a wide smile plastered on his grimy face. We're almost out! This way! As Eric clambered over another mound of rubble and worm, he saw what Evan had found. Between the mangled remains of buildings and creatures was an opening in a wall of stone that had once been a part of Alpha's side. The tiny merc had again waved at him, signaling for him to follow. Eric slid down a slab of concrete, but stumbled when his pant leg caught on the point of a dead worm's open maw. He fell, his face slamming hard into the ground. He could taste blood where his teeth had bit against the tender flesh of his mouth. The worst of it was the piercing ringing in his ears. It warped and swayed his vision, preventing him from getting up. He couldn't hear what Evan was shouting at him, but the frantic gestures were enough to get him to look over his shoulder. The mangled half of what he had presumed to be a dead worm was anything but. It gave a shrill shriek as it tried to get its many legs up under itself. Eric scrambled away on all fours, forcing himself to his feet in time to avoid being snapped between the creature's broken jaws. The worm regained its footing at last and was snaking after them in a lurching, lopsided gait. The pair pelted across the empty expanse to the line of soldiers at the edge of the park, the creature nipping at their heels. Eric prayed the soldiers would see their predicament and lend a hand, but their attention had been focused on the reappearance of the many worms flanking them from behind. The half-dead creature threw itself into a lunge, its jaws opened wide. Eric had little time to think and snatched up the tiny merc at his side, rolling out of the street just as the ground exploded beneath the weight of the worm. It spun mandibles clacking menacingly as it let out another shrill shriek. Eric turned his back, shielding Evan from the creature in what he knew was a futile gesture. Something large and heavy flew past them, putting itself between them and their impending death. The worm crashed into the figure like a car hitting a brick wall at a hundred miles an hour. The force shattered the worm's armored head. A second dark figure stepped in, gripping the side of the creature's now splintered jaw and ripping its face free from its body. Eric kept Evan clutched tight to his chest as he crept slowly away from the spectacle. He had almost cleared the street when an armored boot stepped lazily in his path. He followed the trail of lightly billowing fabrics and glinting ornate armor until his gaze landed on the empty eye sockets of a grinning skull. Madam Whisper 
tilted her head to the side, an unseen, sinister smile on her words. Hello, servant of the Slayer. We have much to talk about. Brig could do nothing but stand in horror, watching as Alpha fought with the Broodmother. Chaos erupted around him as the soldiers laid siege to the massive creature and stone guardian alike. A thunderous crack split the cacophony of destruction. Alpha had managed to lock his hands around two of the giant creature's mandibles, snapping them backwards past their breaking point. The broodmother repaid his gesture with a violent thrash of her body, her jagged spines removing the rest of Alpha's stone facade. The other soldiers didn't seem to notice the screams coming from the edge of the battlefield, but Brig craned his neck to see the cause of the commotion. One by one, worms were appearing behind enemy lines, drawing fire away from their matriarch. Some even threw themselves against the soldiers in a self-sacrifice. Others tore them apart a few at a time, but all were causing major casualties. There, down the narrow street their captors had marched down, he could see the beginnings of a fissure forming. Incoming! Behind you! The guard before him shoved the barrel of his rifle into Briggs' chest. If I wanted you to speak, I'd tell you to do so. Now shut your mouth! The words had barely left the soldier's lips when the ground split open, and a giant worm lunged out from the dust cloud. Brig growled, his temper rising. In one swift movement, he snatched the rifle away from his chest and slammed the butt of it against the guard's face, laying him out cold. He spun the gun around in his hands, took careful aim, and pulled the trigger just as the creature opened its maw to devour them. Eric couldn't figure out why his words weren't coming out. He sat there, his mouth opening and closing as if he were a fish on dry land. Perhaps it was being in the presence, well, at the edge of a blade, really, of the most ruthless dictator the Underwell had ever known. It appears that servant is broken. Madam Whisper made a grand gesture of sighing, turning her blade on Evan. You speak. What is that thing? She pointed a long, bony finger at Alpha, who was still wrestling with the broodmother. I assume you are responsible for its appearance? Evan swallowed down his fear and nodded. He calls himself Alpha? He's like, I don't know, a giant black goo monster? Madam Whisper lifted her sword away, looking down on the tiny creature with mounting curiosity. A transmutational cognizant entity? Evan looked at Eric, who nodded weakly. Well, those were not a big words. But sure. How did it get here? Um, he can hop dimensions? Evan arranged his words to shift the blame away from Eric. Madam Whisper had raised her blade once more, ready to demand the tiny creature clarify, when there was another thunderous crack, this time followed by the roar of victory. Alpha let the broken remains of the broodmother fall to the ground, showering the soldiers and the street in thick green ooze. Madam Whisper turned her gaze to Alpha. He was missing huge chunks of his body, including a sizable portion of his torso and an entire leg. For a giant black goo monster, this creature seems quite solid. That statue is some alien, I, I mean, ancient technology. Eric still hadn't found his tongue, but hearing Evan bring up aliens was enough to cause him to grit his teeth. Evan could feel the death glare Eric was giving him. He's basically unstoppable in it. 
bolts of electricity discharged from Alpha's wounds, striking the ground like shafts of lightning. The excess energy danced up his body, surging around his joints and coalescing in his single amethyst eye. His gaze moved along the carnage, following the still twitching remains of the broodmother, until it landed on Eric. He let out a howl of rage and lunged. Unstoppable. Madam Whisper pointed her blade at the mad god. Challenge accepted. The bullet from Briggs' rifle glanced off the worm's armored carapace and ricocheted off into the skyline. He leveled the gun once more, aiming for the creature, but his other hand was holding back the half-crazed, still-handcuffed Merc. Attila's struggling pulled his arm to the left, and the spray of bullets whizzed past the worm. At the sound of gunfire, the infantry finally realized their predicament and charged headlong into battle. Bayonets and bullets were flying, but the creature was picking them off with ease, swallowing some and shredding others. Just behind them, Brig could hear Alpha's victory cry, the splintering sound of shattering exoskeleton, and the sickening thud of a body in a pool of its own blood. That's not good, he thought. It was just a matter of time before the creature in front of them forced a retreat. But to where? Back into the grip of a pissed-off, semi-psychotic demigod that had just manhandled the mother of all insect phobias? No, thank you. An odd sound echoed down the alley the worm was emerging from. It was like someone was feeding several crushed cars into a giant wood chipper. The worm convulsed, snapped its hard-billed mouth in anguish, and was wrenched backward, whipping out of sight around the corner. The screeches from the worm were drowned out as the sickening sound intensified, and a shower of green ooze splattered the building's sides. The soldiers didn't bother with their gear or their guns. They grabbed their fallen, turned tail, and ran. Attila stopped pulling against Brig. Apparently, fighting a thirty-foot arthropod with your hands tied behind your back didn't faze him. But whatever could tear one apart like that gave him pause. Good to know. Brig glanced over at his best friend. What's the plan? Run? Fight? A massive shadow began to lengthen as it stretched across the ground reaching out from the alley. Attila set his jaw. I'm tired of running. He could use a good theme song right about now. Brig sighed inwardly, nodded, and leveled his gun. The deafening woodchipper sound climaxed as something walked into view. What in the name of Granny's sweet tea is that? Madam Whisper's form was enveloped in her billowing robes as she leapt impossibly high into the air, swinging down the crescent moon blade. It sank deep into Alpha's forearm as he lifted it to protect his face. Madam Whisper gestured violently in the monolith's direction, and a lance of wind hit him in the chest like a truck. You are not welcome here, abomination. Alpha opened his massive hand to grasp at the tiny creature. My quarrel is not with you. Leave, or you too shall be consumed. Madam Whisper yanked free her sword, dodging the giant appendage. She spun the weapon in her hands and drove it into Alpha's shoulder joint. Return to whence you came, or meet your death upon this battlefield. She wrenched back on her blade, pulling it out like a fish hook, ripping out wires and cables in a shower of sparks. Alpha let out a roar as he swung his arm towards the ground, hoping to squash the armored fool beneath his palm. He felt his fist connect with the street, and he let out a bark of a laugh. But when he pulled his hand away, she wasn't there. 
Madam Whisper stepped out of the billowing dust clouds as if she were merely exiting an escalator. She glared up at him, the deep black of her eye sockets speaking more of her threat than her words ever could. This is my realm to rule, not yours. Alpha barked another laugh. I care nothing for this realm, save to crush it thoroughly beneath my heel. Be gone, little tyrant, and you might just survive. He made to slam her into the ground once more, his hand reaching for her at an alarming speed. Two black shapes barreled into his moving arm, causing the strike not only to miss, but pull Alpha off balance and send him rolling to his side. Madam Whisper cackled with delight as she sank her blade into Alpha's shoulder once more, tearing free even more components with a scrape of metal on metal. The Onyx sentries raised their own swords, plunging them into Alpha's wrist and elbow joints. The monolith forced himself up on one hand, using his remaining leg to propel himself forward. Madam Whisper dodged his clumsy attacks and landed gently on his back, sliding her blade deep into the underside of his shoulder. So be it. With a mighty twist, the statue's arm severed completely and it fell to the ground with a tumultuous crash. Alpha screamed in pain, twisting and reaching with his other arm. The tiny creature was distracted, and he snatched her up with a growl. His fingers tightened around her thin form like a vice, even as her stone sentries rushed to her aid. They hacked and slashed at his grip, but he refused to relent. Alpha slammed his fist into the ground, shattering the statues beneath his knuckles and breaking the body of the ageless tyrant. He flung her twisted form to the side and hauled himself into the clearing. He stumbled into an unsteady gait of half-dragging and half-crawling. I know you're out there. Cease this ridiculous game of hide-and-seek. We're not hiding, you worthless pile of landscaping. Alpha turned his head to see Brig, with Attila thrown over his shoulder, perched atop the body of a junkyard machine. It had one hell of a scary defense mechanism, and they were charging straight for him. Trashbot 4000, kill mode activated. Of Monsters and Mushrooms, an ongoing series by Leslie Heron, is a crossover fanfiction mixing her own characters and settings with a few of those created by author J.D. Wiley. She writes for the fun of devising new ways of messing with her characters and seeing just how much trouble they can get into. Well, pepper my rear and call me a gator steak. Would you look at that? <laughs> oh, man! It's huge! It looks like Godzilla's tapeworm. Attila! What? You can't say that. Godzilla is trademarked. Pshaw! What are they gonna do? Shut down the story right before the climax? 